Okay, we're back again, and uh, in this little episode, we're going to talk a little bit about acceleration again. And specifically, I'm going to answer a question that uh, somebody had and posted to one of my other videos. The video, by the way, if you want to look at it, was the video entitled Understanding Acceleration Due to Gravity on the Earth. And in that video, I explained that the acceleration due to gravity near the surface of the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. And what I said in that video is that if an object falls, neglecting air resistance, of course, if an object falls near the surface of the Earth, it will, excel it will accelerate downward at 9.8 meters per second squared, meaning that its velocity during every second of motion will increase by 9.8 meters per second. Another way to say that is that as this object falls, its velocity would increase by 9.8 meters per second every second, so that after one second of falling, an object would have a velocity equal to 9.8 meters per second. And after two seconds of falling, its velocity would have doubled, and its velocity then would be Oh, I think that works out to, let's see, 19.6 meters per second. And then after three seconds, that velocity would have tripled, and the velocity would be 29.4 meters per second. So you see that as an object accelerates downward under the influence of gravity at 9.8, accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared, its velocity increases by 9.8 meters per second every second. So if you want to know what the velocity is after any given time of fall, just multiply the time times the acceleration. It gives you the velocity. Now, the question that I had from the person who was, who was viewing the, uh, the video, that person said, or asked, so if I wanted to figure out how far I have fallen, how far I have fallen, after those four seconds, would I add those values up? And my answer would be no. And the reason for that is, it's true that the velocity increases in this nice linear fashion as the object falls. But when you're talking about the distance that the object falls during each second of motion, the distance is going to increase. As a matter of fact, it's going to increase geometrically as a square of the time. And there's actually an, an equation that we use to calculate the distance that an accelerating object will fall during any given time period. And that equation looks like this. Distance equals one-half acceleration times the time squared. Well, since we're specifically talking about an object that's falling under the influence of gravity, we have to use a very specific rate of acceleration, which is the value of g, 9.8 meters per second squared. So this equation, actually, the way we're going to use it today, looks like this, d equals one-half g t squared. Now these are the, both the same equation, it's just that I use the lowercase g because I'm representing 9.8 meters per second squared always in these problems that I'm working on here. So let's take a look at, at a simple situation. How, you would you, how would you use this equation? Well, let's suppose that we have this object, this ball, sitting up on top of a building, and we're going we're gonna to knock this object off the building and it's going to fall. And the first thing that we can do is we can say, well, how far would this object fall after falling for one second? What distance will it have fallen after one second of falling? So let's go ahead and calculate that. We're going to use, we're going to use this equation, d equals one-half g t squared, and we're going to set this up in three steps. I always have my students set problems up in three steps write the equation down, substitute the proper values and units, cancel the units as necessary, and determine the correct answer and derived unit. So, second step, distance equals one-half 
g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and we're going to multiply it by the time, and the time is going to be one second, and we're going to square that. Well, one squared is one times 9.8 is 9.8, and then we divide that by two, multiply it by half, so that gives us a distance of 4.9 meters. So the distance that this object would fall during the first second, at the end of the first second of falling, this object will have traveled a distance of 4.9 meters. Well, we can do the same thing for two seconds. How far will it have fallen after two seconds? And we do that the same way. D equals one half g t squared. g is 9.8 meters per second squared, the value of acceleration due to gravity. And the time we said was going to be 2 seconds. We're going to square that. So 2 squared is 4. Multiply that by 9.8. Divide your answer by, by 2, and you get, oh, it looks like 19.6 meters. So, after two seconds, this object would have fallen a total of 19.6 meters after two seconds. Well, how about three seconds? D equals one-half G T squared. G is 9.8 meters per second squared times the time and in this case our time is going to be three seconds we're going to square that so nine times nine point eight and divide that by two and we get a distance of forty four point one meters forty four point one meters now let me also point out that you notice that the unit of the answer is meters, and you might ask why. Well, if you look at this, that factors out, leaving only meters in your answer. So I can go back through here, and I can just cancel out all those unwanted units. Meters is left in the answer. Second squared cancels out, leaves meters. So after three seconds, This object will have traveled a distance of 44.1 meters. And now if you look at this, you can see exactly what's happening here. And that is that the distance the object, object travels is becoming geometrically greater as the object falls. So, here's what you got to remember. The change in velocity for an accelerating object, if it's a constant rate of acceleration, the velocity is just going to change in a linear fashion like you see here. The velocity increases, you multiply it by the time. You multiply the acceleration times the time to get the final velocity. And if you have an object that's falling under the influence of gravity, the distance the object travels is going to increase geometrically as a square of the time. So, that's how you calculate the distance an object travels as it falls for any time interval. Now, I hope that answers the question. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and ask a question. I'll come back and answer it for you. And uh, I might even make a video to help explain any particular topic that you have a question about. So, I hope that helps.